Go ahead. Hey all, uh, I'm Thomas Hintz. I've been working on the 3L project. It's a, a new Lisp OS. Uh, it's a very big topic, operating systems and languages, so I'll try to give you a quick overview, but five minutes isn't much time, so you can ask me more later if you want. Uh, the primary focus is extensibility and security. Uh, it's based on R7RS scheme, which runs as a single runtime in one address space. The runtime uh, is built on pre-scheme, so you can't run scheme without some support since it requires a garbage collector for things like closures and such. Pre-scheme is a subset of scheme that uh, doesn't include those things, but you can implement scheme with it. The advantage is you can run it in any scheme implementation. So I actually do most of the development for the operating system inside uh, Scheme 48, which has a sort of emulation layer for pre-scheme. So aside from the drivers, which I kind of emulate, I can develop the OS with a full debugger, profiler, um, that type of stuff, which speeds up development greatly. Uh, so similar to Emacs or Genera, um, maybe a little bit more developed uh, is the extensibility. You can redefine most of the OS while you're using it, including drivers for the most part, uh, schedulers, memory management, most things. Uh, introspection features, uh, not all this implemented yet, some is. Some, some I've designed, some will be coming, but a system-wide debugger, uh, so you can run into a bug with your web application, debug it through the browser, all the way into the kernel and find out it's allocating memory the wrong way or whatever. You can post the entire stack trace for it on Stack Overflow so somebody's not like, oh, I think it's a bug with some library they can actually see. Um, First-class source mapping, which I'll show an example of. Uh, First-class documentation, you can write code to look at the documentation of anything in the operating system and modify it in your programs from a REPL, whatever you want. Uh, this is a quick example of what it looks like from a REPL, how you would interact with the hardware. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I can show you more later. So we create a a, a byte port, um, and scheme ports are how you interface with, you do I.O. basically. Uh, so we create a byte port that starts at memory location 753664, which is where VGA memory um, starts in how I have things set up. It's 4,000 bytes long. So if you notice in this one, the upper left corner, I, is the first letter. We write the byte 87, which is the ASCII value of W, so now that I is a W. So we're writing directly to hardware right here, and it changes what, what's being displayed. Um, the next byte in VGA memory specifies the color of the previous character. So 12 is, you can calculate the number, um, but that means black background, yellow foreground. Uh, so I write 12, and with ports, they uh, like a byte port goes eight bytes at a time. So you write a byte and it moves eight bytes further into memory. Write another byte, it moves another one. So we'll write another letter, which is uh, E. So now it's W-E. We'll set that to yellow. Uh, and then you can also skip ahead in my port system. So I, I skip ahead to the third character, which is six memory location. I. All right, <laughs> that, set that to C, all right, I better hurry. <laughs> so here's an example of your first class source mapping. You can ask for the source code of any function, spits out a Lisp list of that source code, and you can pick it apart, look at its signature, that kind of things, and you can later on reevaluate it to redefine things. Uh, security, you can basically tell things what they're allowed to do, and if they try to do something you haven't allowed, they get an exception. Uh, this is based on first class environments. So, you, well, if you say you want a safe environment that doesn't have any I.O., you can say, I want that environment, and if you try to call an I.O. function, you get an error. 
uh, type check, bounds checking, no native code, GC only, which helps with security. Uh, secure mode, development mode. So development mode, you can redo everything. Right. So, uh, that's five minutes. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to ask the question, what were you going to do next? <laughs> uh, <laughs> in terms of, well, let's see. This is, this is where I'm at right now. So this runs on bare metal. You can like just run it on your machine, no OS support. Um, has a REPL, partially implemented R7, RS, basically everything but syntax rules, which I'm partially done via explicit renaming macros. Has some low level memory access. Uh, I have a list of other things I'm working on. Currently I'm doing a Kickstarter called the 3L Project. Um, you can also email me if you want more info or visit my website, which will be updated soon with more info. So. Um, what bare metal is it running on? And uh, how hard is it to port from? Uh, right now it supports x86-64. I only ever plan to support 64-bit because this is for the future, it's not going to be practically usable anytime soon. So there's not much point in supporting older hardware, especially since it, it's pretty performance, like you need some good performance. And um, it also makes things like a single address space runtime much easier. Um, I'm sorry, um, could, could you? Talk just a little bit about pre-scheme and exactly what is in it and whether or not it's garbage collected or not. That's it's not garbage collected. So it requires manual memory management. Um, pre-scheme kind of supposes an OS. So you can, you can manually memory, it has an API for managing memory. I don't have that, so using pre-scheme I wrote a memory manager, which I then use. And is that, is that a standardized thing? Uh, that I haven't heard of, or what? It's a subset of schemes, so they like to define that. Um, the subset? Yeah. It's a part of Scheme Forty Eight. Okay. Um, I think the people that originally wrote that wrote pre-scheme. Um, yeah. Can you tell us more about your Kickstarter project? Uh. Well, it's to continue work on it for another year, at which point I hope to um, be able to raise more money and get more people working on it. Uh, I've been working on it for a while, but eventually I run out of money. So <laughs> if, if it doesn't succeed, I'm going to continue working on it. It'll just be much slower uh, until I can get enough money to work on it full time again. What's the next slide so we First rule of advertising. <laughs> Yeah, I might need help with marketing and advertising. The, I'm better at programming. <laughs> Speaking of advertising, what, what about spelling it? So you got the 3L project. Uh -huh. machine? Uh, so right before I launched the Kickstarter, I had no name for it. So I just, I was like, oh, low level Lisp 3L project. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have a real na name for it. This is kind of temporary. But yeah, that, that could work. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, just uh, on the scheme, there's actually a good paper on Scheme 48 and bootstrapping. So if you're curious about more what's, what they did at that level to okay. sort of build the layers. There's actually other things based on it which could be very useful. There's a verified pre-scheme, uh, basically verifying it's correct, which would definitely help with security. So what made you decide to do this? Kind of what's your background that kind of got you into this and became interested in this particular problem? <laughs> Uh, well, mostly just frustrated with what we have, which comes from, you know, 30 or so years ago when there were, the computing scene was different, the hardware was not as powerful, so I was like, hey, we can do so much more, and in the future, we should do more, we should take advantage of things, we should have better security, and so that's what I've been wanting to do for years. I've been researching it, and this is based on a lot of different papers, different research I've done over the years, my tinkering. Do you think that you can be changed at runtime? Uh, how do you sort of handle security issues with that? So that's the quick thing I had on secure mode. Uh, if you want it, 
to be in secure mode, which basically disables all development features, marks code read-only, uh, does some other things for cryptographic signing and checking and uh, that kind of thing. You can say, I want to enter secure mode, then reboot the machine. It reboots it in secure mode where you can't do any of that stuff. And the only way to go back and get those development features is to reboot it and say you don't want to be in secure mode. So if you have a password set to happen on boot, it's very difficult to go back into that. Hot swapping. Hot swapping. What do you mean? So like, you load a program into memory, uh -huh. stopping anybody from going into that exact memory space and changing it. Oh, you can't run just arbitrary code. Um, you have to use the API. And you could, via the API, allow a program to do that, but you don't have to. If you don't pass a reference to that memory location, like that port object, um, if you don't pass that to a function and you run it inside an environment that just doesn't reference it, a program cannot get access to it no matter what. It'll just get an exception. All right, well, that's five minutes of questions. Thanks.